All right, so from there, I want to talk about the situation at LSU right now, right? Because I've been very critical of LSU, and I've been very clear about talking about LSU as not necessarily being that good in 2020. I've said they can catch five losses, and I got further information to lead me to that. Kerry Vincent Jr. has opted out of playing at LSU this year. That's a starting safety. And I'm going to read you his letter that he posted to Instagram about an hour ago as we're doing the, the live show. First, I would like to thank Coach Orgeron, the coaching staff, and LSU for helping me mature and develop as a player and a person, both on and off the field. Winning the national championship last year was something that I will cherish forever, and the experiences of the 2019 season proved to me just how important teamwork, leadership, being selfless is to the success of an organization. The LSU fans are the greatest in the world. There's nothing more exciting and fulfilling than putting on the purple and gold uniform and performing in Tiger Stadium in front of our great LSU fans. With thoughtful prayer and lengthy discussions with my family, we feel that it is in my best interest to opt out of my final year at LSU and begin training for the NFL Combine. I have worked long and hard for the opportunity to play in the NFL. I'm humble and excited about attacking this next challenge with humility, integrity, and dignity. I will always be forever LSU. Kerry Vince Jr. signs his name there. So that now means that LSU has eight new starters on defense and eight new starters on offense. To add to that, Marcel Brooks went into the transfer portal, came out at Texas Christian. You're asking a lot. You're asking a lot for this team to do anything like repeating, let alone get back to the SEC championship in a year in which I think it's Alabama's to win. We make it through a college football season. I picked them way back in January when it was regular. I got more reason to believe in them now that Ohio State ain't playing football for all intents and purposes as we know it. Neither is in Oregon, right, for that matter. And now LSU not just has eight new starters on offense. They're starting a new quarterback, okay? I don't care how you feel about Miles Brennan. He ain't Joe Burrow. Hell, Joe Burrow wasn't even Joe Burrow until 2019, all right? And the idea that you think that Miles Brennan is going to pick up where they left off with a new tailback, uh, mostly new offensive line, and you got to replace dudes like Justin Jefferson at wideout. I don't see it, man. I mean, Eric Gilbert's going to be a dude. I get that. Tight end, wide receiver. He's going to be great. I know what we have in Jamar Chase. I know what we have in Terrace Marshall, right? But outside of that, everybody else is new, right? Everybody else is a new starter. Literally everybody else. You cannot expect them to be great. You got to hope that they're good. And when I see their schedule that they got laid out, yeah, it's easy to see five losses in there in a, in a 12-game season, right? 10-game season, let's go with three. But three is enough, right? You go seven and three in a conference-only regular season, that ain't going to be good, especially as the defending national champs. Defensively, you got to hope Jabril Cox is the goods coming out of North Dakota State. Otherwise, you're up a creek at middle linebacker. You have a new defensive scheme. You have a new coordinator, this is not a great look for LSU. This is going to be hard. Like, Derek Stingley Jr., you know how much I believe in him. You know how much I love that kid. You know, but outside of that, you're talking about Elias Ricks, right? Cordell Flott. You need to expect one or both of those guys to play a lot of snaps. And Cordell Flott played a bunch of games last year, and I understand there's a lot of people thinking he's going to be good. But I was expecting Kerry Vincent to hold down that strong safety spot for them. He can foot rush from the nine. He can cover. He, I mean, it's going to be difficult because you already lost a Grant Delpit that could play like six positions for you. I don't see how LSU fans can talk themselves into this thing where they believe that they're going to just get back off where they were and be great. It's just not what it's going to be, right? That's just not how it's going to work out, and that's okay. You know, for Oklahoma, I've said the, the window was 2017, Okay. Then, surprised everybody in 2018, 2019, you're playing with house money as far as I'm concerned, 2020, again, house money, and then 2021, that's the year. That's the year for Oklahoma to try to go after a national championship because Rattler will have a year as a starter. 
You'll have all that 2019 group be your leaders and your starters, and you'll have some continuity there at defensive coordinator that everybody believes in after what Grinch was able to do in his first year. LSU ain't got there. They're back to where Oklahoma was in 2002, okay? They're back to where Texas was in 2006. You know, it's it's the rare program that can just continue to churn them out. And I just don't see that at LSU, especially in a division that Alabama is in, that Auburn is in. I got a better uh, chance believing that Auburn makes it to a national championship game than I do LSU. And that's not a dig. That's just what it is. You know, like, do you really think that this year, a Georgia with store brand Cam Newton, with five tailbacks that can start for anybody, with George Pickens and a Kirby Smart defense, is not going to go hunting your head? To say nothing, to Florida remembers last year, and you got them on the schedule. You got Kyle Trask coming for you everything, right? You got a Kyle Pitts that can't wait to get matched up against that LSU defense and be the better tight end between he and Eric Gilbert. You got a bunch of defenders that are going to be blitzing for Ty Grantham that are going to be going for Miles Brennan's kidneys, okay? It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be pretty. All right, let's check the chat. Let's see. Uh, let me see. LSU needs a Thunderdome. Yes, they do. Uh, do, do, do. You asking a lot, dude, of OU. Yeah, I've been saying that. Like, I'm clear. My, I've been very clear about that. Like, I don't understand how you could say that I'm a homer listening to me talk about Oklahoma. Right? It's the squad. It's the squad. But I'm also very clear about that. Right? I've always been very clear about that. And I've been dunking on this idea of Oklahoma ruling the Big 12 because it feels like being all state in Rhode Island. Okay? 